All right, everybody, welcome back into Cherry Picking. Today's video must drop for week five of the fantasy hockey season. The video presented by FanDuel Canada, official sportsbook partner of the NHL, the best place to be placing your hockey bets this season. Okay, last week's video for must drop, we looked at five players to drop. Let's just quickly go through them and see kind of how they did. The first one being Tyson Berry had just one point last week. Again, a guy I'm not going to be keeping on my roster. His roster percentage has considerably considerably dropped as well recently too. So not a bad pick there. Elias Lindholm did have two assists in that game against Dallas, but still even in that game against the Kraken was remained off the stat sheet. So a little bit of inconsistency we're still seeing from Elias Lindholm and pretty much most players you're going to be seeing on this Calgary Flames team as well. Uh, Trotrek, same thing, had just one assist last week. Just playing on that third line, he's not getting a ton of production. And even volume as well, playing with Blake Wheeler, just not really something that's that's meshing well for Trocheck right now. Uh, Ricard Raquel did have two assists last week, but still in that same kind of role, it's going to be the Malkin and, and Riley Smith show on that second line. And then lastly, Tyler Sagan he had five games. His last five games, he has just one point to show for. As Peter DeBoer goes through these lines, it doesn't seem like he's going to be a focal point as much as we saw at the beginning of the season, maybe. That second line of Wyatt Johnson, Jamie Benn, uh, and Evgeny Dodonov has seems like it's going to be taking the cake there as the second best line in the second line playing the most time. So, so five players we dropped last week. Let's get into five players we're going to be dropping this week for Fantasy Hot. All right, so the first player we're going to be looking to drop this week is Vladimir Tarasenko on the Ottawa Senators. And I know it might come as a little bit of a surprise. He was on my buy low, sell high as a sell high because... He had a really hot start to the year, was scoring at a pretty efficient rate and getting a solid amount of points. But since I would say the last five games, we've seen a completely different Vladimir Tarasenko, more of a, a of a level we saw under the Rangers last year and even the tail end of the season when he was playing with the Blues and a little bit injured as well. But his, he has just two points his last four games played and he's ninth in expected goals for on the team in that same time frame and his numbers drop considerably in five on five play and that's concerning because he does just have two power play points to show for so if he's contributing even less than five on five the point production like where it's going to come from I don't think it's going to come from anywhere that's one of the main reasons why I think Tarasenko is a prime candidate to drop right now at that right winger position obviously a little bit concerning it's definitely harder to find solid right wingers but depending on what size of league you're in I think he can definitely be a drop he also only has 18 shots on goal in 10 through 10 games played that's a really low number shooting percent right around 17%, so still a little high for my liking as well. And over his last four games played on the Sens team, he's playing the 10th most minutes, um, and that's in all strength. That doesn't include just five-on-five five play, so that is also concerning. And the biggest part, Ridley Grieg is now hurt as well. He was centering that line with him and Kubalik, but now it's Rourke Chartier, a uh, guy with a little less experience, and obviously this chemistry has not been built yet on this team, or on this line, excuse me, so... I definitely think Tarasenko is a prime candidate to drop this week, despite being 72% rostered in Yahoo Fantasy. All right, the next guy we're dropping, Johnny Gaudreau on the Columbus Blue Jackets. 76% rostered, but I've had enough of this guy, and I've a lot, it seems like you guys in the comments have had enough of them as well. Um, I know at 76% rostered, definitely hard to let someone go, especially playing on the first line, but let's just take a look at his point production and what he's done this year. It's You'll be, you'll be a little bit more understanding, I think. 12 games played. Five points, just one goal. His shooting percentage is 3%. He's shooting the puck a decent amount. Like he's 36 shots on goal. Um, and he's playing a decent amount of time right now. But that's what happens when you're playing on a first line anywhere. Right now, playing on that first line with Boone Jenner and Jack Roslovich. Obviously, Patrick Line a hurt right now. But even at the beginning of the season, didn't really seem like that helped a whole, a whole lot. Um, he has one point in his last four games. He has one point in his last 70 minutes of time on the ice. That is really low and just two high danger chances accounted for in that same time frame as well. So obviously this Columbus Blue Jackets team uh, going through a little bit of a rebuild, but you'd, you'd still think this top line will be able to produce, but it's just not really seeing the same kind of production. Like you look at a guy like Boone Jenner who started to score a few more goals. He's creating all the offense on this top line. If you look at scoring chances created, high danger chances created, and his expected goals for a number, hell of a lot higher than Johnny Gaudreau's right now. So that's one of the reasons why we're dropping him. Um, but for a guy, you know, who's drafted in the sixth or seventh round, you can't have five points through 12 games played. I don't care how long you're going to wait for him to produce. It's, there's no point of keeping him on your roster. You're, then there's better people that you can even stream for Johnny Gaudreau instead when there's, especially this week, there's like six or seven teams playing four games. Um, Columbus Blue Jackets being one of those teams, so maybe you can write the ship here, but I just don't think that's going to be the case. Um, and I did mention he has five points this year, one goal. That one goal 
empty netter against the Tampa Bay Lightning when the Columbus Blue Jackets won 4-2. So I don't know what's going on with Johnny, John, Johnny Gaudreau right now, but it doesn't seem like he's going to be scoring at the same rate we saw last year. It was a little concerning. He was being a guy that I thought would be regressing this year, considering how high his shooting percentage was last season. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm done with this guy, and I think a lot of you guys are, so I'm giving you guys the green light. Drop gun and Johnny Gaudreau and find someone else. All right, so the first center we're going to be looking at dropping this week, always going to be giving you guys centers to drop because there's just so many on your waiver wire that you can pick up and kind of slot in there, and that's Matty Beneers on the Seattle Kraken. 44% rostered, zero goals through 12 games played this year, so obviously really tough to see that for a guy who just won the Calder Trophy. Uh, he's 10th on the team in points this season as well. That's obviously concerning, considering he also plays on that first line playing around 18 minutes per game. Uh, but over his last four games played, his number's seriously concerning here. Uh, if you're looking at five-on-five five ranks amongst his team, he's 11th in shots with just five, eighth in expected goals four, seventh in high danger chances created, and he has logged just one assist there. Seattle's offense, um, I mentioned a lot of my videos, and even before the season started, I think we were absolutely due to see some regression here looking at uh, their expected goals for number last season compared to their actual number of goals they scored their first in goals for per 60 in five on five last season but just outside the top 20 expected goals for so they weren't creating a lot of offense scoring on a very low volume of shots that doesn't really work in the NHL for a really extended long period of time and we're seeing that happen in the Seattle Kraken as they continue to struggle right now Matty Benier is not really a guy that you're going to want to keep on your team for fantasy hockey similar to like a Mark Stone obviously does a, he's an excellent hockey player, does a lot of really good things on the ice, but when you're looking at in terms of fantasy hockey, just not someone you're going to want to keep on your team, so drop Matty Benitez. The one defenseman we're going to be looking to drop this week is John Klingberg on the Toronto Maple Leafs. 12 games played, has yet to log a goal yet, has five assists, but those all came at the beginning of the season. If you look at his more recent play, not very solid. And in terms of people in bangers leagues, just looking at his hits and blocks, 11 hits on the season, 13 blocks. He's playing like 21 minutes per game, so obviously that is a pretty solid number to have. But he does not have a single point his last six games played, and his dash three, it's not like he's shooting a ton as well, 14 shots on goal in his last 12 games played. So he's really not filling any sort of stack category, which means why would you keep him on your team? Um, he's somehow been worse defensively this season than he was last year as well. And last year, he was like literally the worst defenseman in the NHL, literally ranked. Uh, so we'll see probably Sheldon Keefe starting to do like similar things here and maybe dropping his ice time, maybe moving him off that first pair. The D Toronto Maple Leafs defensive unit is not really not really flowing in the same kind of state here, so I think we'll definitely see them start to change. Um, he doesn't contribute, like I mentioned enough, in bangers leagues to keep him rostered right now, so John Klingberg, definitely a guy I'd be looking to drop at 35% roster. All right, so the last guy we're going to be dropping also on the Toronto Maple Leafs, still 30% rostered, which I think is very surprising, but you can definitely let him go at this point, and that's Tyler Bertuzzi. Um, 12 games played, has just three points with two goals. And he looks bad out there. He looks really bad. He looks slow. He doesn't have that same kind of juice that we saw when he was on Detroit and even Boston. He's now been moved off that first line as well, which was really the only factor you'd want to keep him on your on your fantasy hockey team. Is really the main reason why uh, I told you guys to pick up Matthew Nyes in that must drop or must add, excuse me, uh, that I dropped two days ago. So getting moved off that top line, he's now in the second line. So you might think that's not a huge drop off, but he really hasn't been able to produce at all since then. Um, and if you're looking at kind of his value on the power play too, he's played just six minutes of power play time in the la in their last four games, which means, and I think it's probably pretty obvious to be honest, the first power play just dominates when they do get a man advantage. They're, that second unit is not going to be playing a, a lot. So really no one on that second power play is going to carry value in terms of power play points. So one of the reasons why I'm getting rid of Tyler Bertuzzi for sure. He also doesn't have a point in five straight games, has seven shots on goal his last four games played. But that's kind of skewed because one of those games, he had four shots on goal and the other three, he had three shots on goal, one in each of those games. Um, so his volume's not there. Playing on the line with Tavares and Nylander, he's not going to be the one driving play. So you're going to be looking for like secondary assists and residuals for him to get fantasy hockey points. And out of the different line combinations that Sheldon Keith has signed, put together so far this year in terms of offensive lines, the Tavares, Nylander, Bertuzzi line, seventh on the team in expected goals for percentage at 48%. That ranks 78th in the NHL. So Tyler Berduzzi, definitely not a guy you're going to want to keep on your fantasy hockey roster. Drop him and pick someone else. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you thought of this week's must drop. Again, drop your comments and let me know what you want to do with your team or if there's any other guys you're looking to drop. Be sure to like and subscribe. Download the FanDuel Canada app. Start betting on the NHL today. And I'll see you guys in the next video.